Stop by to interact with the community and I every Friday night at 8 o'clock for live stream Fridays. Welcome trolls. <laughs>late here 205 a.m. and I'm staying up because I want to get another video up for you guys the satellite video I was really concerned about it something happened with the copyright for some reason but there was nothing that had any copyrights it was all completely free videos and free um, in the Creative Commons etc public domain but Either way, I'll leave it up and leave the ads to someone else. Look what we're looking at here. Um, something very important. Several objects side by side, maybe five to ten of them. Those graph-like lines on the top there. Also connected to Clavius Crater. I will show you that in another video a bit later. We're seeing it all along the Terminator line. Luckily, to be able to see exactly what's going on. Check it out, guys. Here are those lines, another view of it. We saw it better a couple of weeks ago, but nonetheless, nevertheless, we'll see it some more. Those lines there, and over to the left, those bumps side by side, and not just one or two of them, probably about 15 or 20 of them. And I'm sure if we zoom in, it could be 100 or 200 of them. The more we zoom in right there, the more we zoom in, the more we see these symmetrical objects. You can clearly see them. The bumps side by side you know some people say you know why do you try to make things up why do you try to convince people and to look for bugs well there's no bugs whatsoever it's so obvious that the surface was constructed that it's absolutely ridiculous those with big telescopes not mentioning it I'm not gonna get any further than that but say to yourself big observatory telescopes are working for the government they have jobs, right? So, whatever. Um, I have a 14-inch telescope, and I'm finding a lot on the surface. So are many other people, astronomers, that don't have big observatory telescopes. So, I'm not alone finding UFOs out there in space. There are many other people. I haven't seen all the videos, but I'm sure there are. I can't be alone catching UFOs, that's for sure. But finding them on the surface? Hmm. That's something pretty incredible. More and more we will see. We haven't done anything with the 14 inch guys yet. We are just beginning. I need a lot of more moon shots and moon phases for me to be able to get some different um, views along that Terminator line. You're seeing a little bit of um, clouds. Those are the clouds that were in the sky from Earth, <laughs> not clouds on the moon. And another thing that's very easy to differentiate that's what I'm trying to do here too you know different differentiate meteors from asteroids from UFOs from satellites we all we have is the information that's out there so all we can do is make the best of it common sense right look at it the beautiful Terminator line is showing us again that graph line area on the right and reservoirs who knows you know when you see them all aligned like that but they're also connected to those graph lines so the connection of something it's some type of power source this is my favorite way this is mere serenitatis to show the surface mons argeas where the apollo 17 moon landing landed supposedly um oh yeah here also bottom i showed that not too long ago at the bottom of mere serenitatis this massive mound so, as we're documenting this, my goal along the way is also to document everything that's going to change. Um, you know, elevation of these mounds or anything on the surface, brighter lights, because we do see a lot of change. But the changes are coming in the color on the surface. That's the only um, area I've seen change so far is the color. Now, it looks different on the surface when you're looking at it like this. Trust me. I'm going to show you the real way 
before filtering the, it to see the difference. And you're going to see the structures are exactly there. This beautiful object, object sorry, at the bottom of Mariserenitatis, not far from Proclus Crater. There's so much detail on that surface by looking at it straight up like this. Because all these objects have the same reflectivity when you're looking at a gray moon. And now by simply inverting the photo, again, simply inverting the photo, you could see all the, the objects on the surface that I'm trying to show people. <laughs> it's right there. There's no manipulation. And I really, well, for me for one, love seeing it this way. Now let's really get in ridiculous clothes. This is, should have been called ridiculous clothes video. Um, this one here, because some of you have been asking me, Bruce, zoom in. I know most of you appreciate it, but it's just, it's not for everyone, right? To zoom in close. I have a lot of things that I see by zooming in like this. The first signs of the other smaller structure and that blur. The blur, it's because there's other structures and objects that the cameras and our eyes are not picking up yet, but we will very soon as we progress. Tycho Crater, check it out, guys. Always a mist, haze, or smoke around Tycho Crater all the time. And it's said that it's white like that because it's a younger crater. Hmm. I don't think so. We're seeing smoke, smokes and hazes. And some of these actually look like they're coming from the bloody craters. I've showed that in some past videos. This beautiful spaceship parked there on the side, waiting to leave. It really does look like it, doesn't it? Obviously, these objects haven't moved for thousands of years. But you must agree, there is a moment at one point for a couple of days, a couple of weeks, that we don't see the moon. So who knows what's going on up there if we can't get a view of that moon. You know, all these objects and UFOs could be leaving on the surface. And I tend to think that they already are right under our eyes. And that's what I've been showing. They're so small to see from here. And of course, they're white lights and they're roaming along the edges of these craters and mares. They're so hard to detect. But again, not impossible. They really aren't impossible to detect. I want to thank each and every one of you for coming here. The newcomers, the ones that have been with me for since the beginning. Thanks for taking the time to check out the research for the interest Good times are coming, guys. The weather is changing. Say to yourself, when the moon will be out for 10 to 12 days this summer, and as the weather progresses, I will be outside. I am going to take the telescope away from home. Not far. Probably only a four-minute drive, but it's up in the dark area. Um, it's going to help us, maybe, to see the difference. And I'm gonna know right away because when I'm going, it's very dark and I'm gonna be able to tell you if it's worth leaving home with your telescope. Because let me tell you, um, the 14 inch telescope, look at this, floating off the surface. Could be holding by the back end, that's for sure, but it's definitely a cover top. Definitely a cover top. Telescopes are made now a bit better to be able to be beside light. Um, even Hawking's um, had bought an amazing telescope before he died. Uh, one like mine, I think a 10 inch or an 11 inch, maybe I'm mistaken, but it's made so that it will break through that light. So will there be a difference? Um, here's that spaceship, <laughs> um, the creator from the other angle. Mary Chrysium. So we'll see it going with the telescope uh, in a darker area. We'll know right away if it's worth it. Mary Chrysium, and I'm gonna show this with the original um, footage without tampering it with it or adding a filter, right? You're gonna see the difference and you're also gonna see that before I, I do this inversion, you could see all the structures there on the moon. Definitely can. I'm showing the elevation right now. This is Merichrysium, the white patch at the bottom, but you see where it looks like a hole goes in there. It's absolutely incredible. The elevation, thousands of feet that you can see there, but watching the gray footage, and you're going to see, you really can't see any elevation whatsoever. It actually looks like it's descending when you see the regular footage. We're just going to take our time and go up. Mons Argeus at the top right there. We're approaching Mare Serenitatis. So all these lines and objects on the surface can be seen really, really well just like this. So when you get a clear, 
clear night and you get your telescope really in focus, you're, you could be very lucky because that can be the difference um, in whether you see the buildings or structures, natural or not, or not. So here they are, uh, same footage, just one is inverted and look at the major difference. You see all the objects on the bottom and on the top, you, you could also see the objects, but they have the same reflectivity, near impossible to see. It's not, not easy to see, but again, it's not impossible. And most people, I know all of you are here because you know, you guys are curious too. It's uh, it's a hassle for you. I'm sure of it. You pause the video sometimes, rewind it, pause it, rewind it, but it's because we're trying to find some truth, right? We're trying to see exactly what's up there. I, turn um, the image around a lot because often uh, we could see at a better angle by turning things around. So again, thanks so much uh, guys and gals for stopping by here for the support, stopping by my channel and I'm going to be getting a lot more. I'm looking through some infrared footage right now as you guys are watching this and um, I'll see you all tomorrow. Yeah.